Well, welcome. I'm Pastor Doyle Jackson of the church next door. I'm so excited today because I get to share with you our church. This is the church next door. This is our sanctuary. So welcome to Growing Closer to God. I'm Pastor Doyle from The Church Next Door, and today we're starting a new series. It's called Our Time. It's about our time to shine. You know, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is talking with his disciples, and he says, you know, there's all this conversation going on about who I am and who John the Baptist is. So Jesus looks at them and he says, so who do you say that I am? They all kind of stand around and look at one another, and finally Peter speaks up and he says, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus goes, right, Pete, you got that one right. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That passage of scripture implies that you and I are called by God to be a church that is so powerful and expansive that even the gates of hell can't push against us. God invites you and I to step into this world with his hope, with his love, and with his life. So what does it mean for us to shine? What would it mean for the church to shine in this season? That's what I want to talk to you about today. When I was a little boy, my family went to a Christian camp. It was called Tennessee Georgia Kirsten Camp. And there they had lots of really wonderful Christians speak. There was a little old lady that spoke by the name of Corey Ten Boom. You may know her story from The Hiding Place. Her family hid Jews in their home during the war to protect them from the Nazis. Because of that, they went to prison. At this meeting, Corey brought all the children down front and she had them sit on the floor in front of her and she brought out her flashlight. I remember that as she sat there, she began to unscrew her, la her flashlight because she noticed it wouldn't come on. She'd press the button and the light didn't come on. So she began to unscrew it and she opened it up and she looked down inside and she said, oh my, there's only one battery in this flashlight. Everybody knows you need more than one battery. Maybe that's why it's not working. She pulls out the battery and then she says, oh no, there's something else in my flashlight. She pulls it out and there's this rag inside. She holds it up and it says, bitter spirit. She said, when you first come to know Jesus, you get the power source of God in your life. But she said, you need a second power source from God and that's the Holy Spirit. And whenever there's something like this inside of you, the Holy Spirit can't work. And she said, what's a bitter spirit? It's anger. Hebrews 12, 15, it says, a bitter spirit or a bad temper, which is bad in itself, but can also poison the life of many others. She said, when you and I have a bitter spirit, it keeps the Holy Spirit from empowering our life to be a witness for God and show hope for God. Then she looked down inside her light and she pulled out yet another one. She said, looky here, here's unforgiveness. She said, do you realize that if, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you can't, you can't show other people love? She said, I remember that from Ravensbrook when I was in prison. I had to forgive my prison guards in order for me to show them love so they could see the light of Jesus. She said, let's see if there's anything else inside. She pulls out yet another one and inside it said stubbornness. And then she said, and stubbornness is as idolatry. She just kept pulling these, these rags out of this little light. She said, what about pride? If pride is inside of us, we can't show God's love. Then she pulled out one that said worry, jealousy, or criticism. She said, any one of those. She said, now this is what I want you to do. If you, when you look in your heart, when you pray and you recognize any of those sins there, you bring them to Jesus and you say, Lord Jesus, would you apply your blood to my worry or my selfishness or my pride, 
I want to break its hold in my life today so that you can shine through. And then she said, the next step is you invite the Holy Spirit to come in. You say, Holy Spirit, would you come in? And would you fill me and direct me and help me to show the love of Jesus to the world in which we live? And he will do that for you. Then I watched as she got out her other battery and she put it in. She said, one is your salvation from inviting Jesus in. She said, the other is the Holy Spirit shining through you. And then she, she twisted on her light. And I remember with Corey sitting there and she pressed the button and the light came on and she shined it around the room. She said, in this time, in this world, they need you to be free of all your sin so you can shine and show Jesus love. And she said, there is no darkness greater than the light of Jesus Christ. And God has called you to be a light in this generation. God has called you to make a difference. I want to invite you to go to God and let the blood of Jesus cleanse you of all sin. And then I want to invite you to say, Holy Spirit, would you come flow through me? Would you show me how to live and to love and to share the hope of Jesus Christ in this season in Columbus? I want to tell you a really neat story from history from right here in Columbus. In Columbus, Ohio, in 1918, we experienced the Spanish influenza. And I have some beautiful pictures of what First Baptist looks like before now. It, it's called the Blue Stone and it's used for events. But back in the 1918 era, when the Spanish flu came, First Baptist Church went out and cared for the people that got sick. The, the church went out and showed the love of God. They nursed them, they fed them, and they helped people to overcome the flu. Is there some way that you can shine for God? But the first step you and I have to do is this. We have to get rid of anything that would block us from letting the Holy Spirit flow through us. And you and I, we want to be attuned to the Holy Spirit so that we can take our place because this is our time and it's our time to shine. I want to invite Jennifer to come at this time and she's going to interview a friend of ours, Mitchell. And he's going to share his testimony, how God has begun to shine in Mitchell's life, and he can shine through you too. I'm so glad you could be with us today. Well, today we have Mitchell Schaefer here, and we're talking about this is our time to shine. You certainly shine, Mitchell. Every time I see you, you're smiling and such a bright light. But tell me a little bit about, tell us who you are. Tell us some of your story. I had a rough upbringing, but... My mom and dad split up, so I kind of been back and forth between them two. And just love was kind of hard to get when I was that young because everything that was going on. I was saved when I was younger, and um, I just give all the credit to my grandma. She, mm -hmm. <laughs> she always prayed for me, and I got that love from her whenever I seen her. But we know that God is in control, and we know that we have to trust Him, and we have to help others in this darkness. You know, we have to be a light to people that, you know, don't have God like certain people do. What was your life like before Christ? I don't know what age your parents divorced, but um, like what, what did that darkness feel like and how did the light change your life? Stuff started to get real for me around 16 when I was in high school. I didn't really get along with the teachers. I was just, I didn't have any motivation to really. But then, so I just started going down that wrong path, you know, I started drinking, I was smoking, and I'd work like a week, then I wouldn't work no more, and then I just, I ended up, my, my friend was starting to graduate, um, Brian, he came here, and I just, he uh, asked me if I wanted to go to his graduation party, and I was like, sure, dude, you know, I'll definitely be there, and this is um, when I just recently started dating uh, my, my wife I'm with now. I just started dating her, so and I was still new with God. So as soon as I started dating her, I started getting in the church and stuff. I started getting right. And I, and I didn't know at that point, you know, hey, if you're starting to change your life, you know, you need to not go back to your old life. But I was like, yeah, man, sure. You got a graduation party. I'll come to it, you know, I'll be there to support you. And uh, we just, we started drinking and stuff, you know, and next thing I know, I was just out of it, you know, I was just doing stupid stuff. And 
I just remember God, this is when God really came to me, you know? This is when God really was like, hey, like in my head I heard him, he said, you know, is this the life you want to live? And I knew then and there that it was, it was, it was either you're for God or you're not for God, you know? So I was like, of course, I'm for you, you know? I've, I, I love you, you've always been there for me. I was like, of course. And he's like, leave then. I'm like, uh, I am not in the condition to be driving, but I, just, I was obedient. I said, okay, I'll leave. I, so I remember, I remember being in the car and I was just, it was, it was so rough. Like I just felt literally so, like I was out, out of my body and God was just driving the car. Like it was, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna get you home this time. He's like, but after this, you know, this is it. I, I believe prayers of loved ones saved me that night. You know, I could have, I could have been hurt. I could have died. You know, but I remember, I remember going home, and I, I saw I saw Shekinah, and I was like, you know, I I was I just started crying. I was, I was so sorry, and ever since then, I've just been not saying I'm perfect. You know, nobody's perfect, but I have God has just moved in my life so much over these past couple of years, and me and Shekinah are just doing great. I, I love how you have been working so hard. I can t I know that, and and God gave you this beautiful wife, Shekinah. Oh my That's, gosh, yes. That was a great thing. Yeah, I didn't, I, there's so much I could go into, but it, it would take me all day to get this testimony, I'm telling you. But he just, he told me like, you know, all those times you prayed, prayed all, and when you was hurt, when you was younger, you didn't get love, you know, this is for you, you know, Shekinah is that gift for me, for what I went through. And that's, that was my biggest gift from God, it, you know, is her, I love her so much. And she has, she has helped me so much along the way. Yeah, she's amazing. You're really a transformed life. Like. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a whole different person compared to how I was, yeah. God did the whole 360 <laughs> on me. I accepted him, I said, please change me, just like that. How do you think people, so you said you're 22, how could they shine? How can they shine in the midst of all this hurt, midst of all of this, what could they do? Just be a light, you know? If there's somebody that's in, that someone needs help or just anything, always, keep an eye out for someone that's in need of help or if if it's money or if it's if it's a if someone's at a, if you're at a going to the dollar store or Walmart and someone's got their hood up and you're right there you know hey are you okay you know anything just to let people see that there's people out there that are that care and like are helping you know because now we live in a world nowadays it's just quick pace everybody's all about themselves they don't they don't want to just be, a, just be as best person as you can, you know, that's what all God wants us to do is be there for everybody, love everybody. Do you think God has gone back and healed your heart from the past hurts that you're able to shine so bright? Yeah, 100%, 100%. The main thing was is just, you know, I, I'm not saying I wasn't the perfect kid, you know, for my mom and stuff, but we were both wrong. And when I was able to go and apologize to her and, and tell her how I felt and she told me how she felt, you know, it just healed instantly. That's what God does, just healed that hurt and all that pain. You don't want to hold that hate in your heart, you know, mm. especially against your mom or your dad or anyone that you love. You don't want to have that to them. You, want to, you don't want to have that because that's just going to be bitterness in your heart and you don't want that in your heart. Well, I'm so impressed with you. I'm, yeah, I'm so proud of you and, and what a light you are. Don't be proud of me, be proud of God. <laughs> I'm serious, I could not have done it without him. Glory to God. I'm so glad you got to meet Mitchell and Shekinah and hear their testimony. I hope you were encouraged. Well, I wanna encourage you some more. I've got a special offer for you today. This week, we're not giving you a book. We're gonna give you a T-shirt, a Jesus Way T-shirt from the church next door. Text T-shirt to 614-412-2144 and we'll send you a T-shirt today. Wherever you go, if you wear a T-shirt and let the love of Jesus shine. We've been talking about our time to shine. And I think about Elizabeth. She was one of my favorite people in the Bible, probably because she was a pastor's wife, just like I am. She was married to Zachariah the priest and they were unable to have children. And you think about this story, Zachariah was so shocked that they couldn't have children that when the angel of the Lord told them that they were gonna have a son, that he ended up being unable to speak throughout the pregnancy. So God took away his voice. So you have Elizabeth pregnant. The Bible says that she remained in seclusion for five months, kind of the way we feel. We've been so secluded recently. So she's pregnant in seclusion. Her husband can't speak. 
And in the midst of all that, her cousin, Mary, says, can I come over? I would like to hang out with you. I think that was probably an inconvenient time. Yes, Mary, the mother of Jesus. So Mary shows up at the door. She comes in and stays three months. So Elizabeth would have been pregnant from six months to nine months. And Mary stays with her. I think that Elizabeth, this was her finest moment because she was really shining. She was there for Mary. She was there for her because Mary was in a desperate way. She was a teenager. She was pregnant. They said Joseph was perhaps going to divorce her quietly. If you think about all that was going on and Elizabeth chose to shine. She said, I want to reach out to you. She welcomed her with hospitality into her home. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Don't you just love this? They stayed together, but Elizabeth received a blessing as she was shining. You know, when those two babies met, so you have John the Baptist and Jesus in the womb, they were leaping and it says Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So in her shining for God, she also received the Holy Spirit and he will do that for you too. He will do that for me. So I think that's one way that we can really shine in the season, offer hospitality, look for those in need, open your home to those who need it. And then another way I think is just to shine through generosity that we can give, we can look for ways to give. I remember a time when we had this dining room set, it was a nice dining room set, it had two leaves in the table and it would hold at least eight people around the dining room table. We had a china cabinet, we had a buffet. And one day I felt as if God showed me I should give that to a mother in our church. Took a lot of courage and I called the mom and I said, hey, I have this dining set. I don't know if I'm just, you know, thinking strange or what, but I thought maybe this would be helpful for you. They had four children. I couldn't believe what I heard on the phone. The mother said to me, I was just praying in my family room floor that God would provide for us a table. That was incredible. We gave them our table and you know, we didn't have another table to replace it right away. But in that moment, I felt like it was a way for our family to shine in that season. Look at the church of Acts. If you look at Acts 2:44, it says, all the believers were in fellowship as one body and they shared with one another whatever they had out of their generosity. They even sold their assets to distribute the proceeds to those who were in need among them. I love that verse. I don't know what the people in your life need. I don't know what you have. You may say, you know, I don't know what I have, but maybe you have a table, maybe you have a couch and other someone else needs it. In this season, we can shine through generosity. This is not a time to shrink back. This is a time to give. This is a time to shine. And I, I just pray that this week you will find it in your heart to shine and the Holy Spirit will meet you in that. When you and I give our life to God, He says, if you will allow me to pour through you, I will cause you to shine in a really, really bright way. I believe if you and I will just open ourselves up to God, we talked earlier about removing any sin, any, any anger, any bitterness, any pride, any worry, and giving that to God and letting the Holy Spirit begin to flow through us. In Acts chapter one, verse eight, it says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you in power, He will make you witnesses in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. When I think about shining and I think about being the, the light of God, there's three ways I think about that. First of all, I think about you and I being a mirror. The first principle is we want to reflect God. John chapter eight, verse 12, Jesus spoke again to the people. He said, 
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When you and I walk with Jesus, we have the light of life and we can reflect him to the world around us. The second way is to be a lens. A lens allows you to focus the light, to shine it on a place, a particular place. Well, what is the place that you have been called to shine upon? And the last aspect of shining is to paint a picture. See, I believe that what God has called you and I, the church to be, is the bride of Christ. We're to be his hands and feet in the world in which we live. And every time you and I show kindness, every time we show love, what we're doing is we're showing a picture of what it looks like to be Jesus. So I want you to think about it this week. Is there someone that you need to share your love with? Is there someone who needs just a phone call? What is it that God has called you to do to show the love of God in this season? We have Obadiah from Radio U with us. So woohoo! All right. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, it's awesome. Obadiah, tell us a little bit about uh, your, just your personal life and, and who you are. What do you do when you're not at the radio station? Well, it's weird. I, I, I'm a little guarded sometimes about my personal life, but I, uh, like I work at Radio U. Uh, I also, believe it or not, am a creative director at a church. Uh, I do that, and uh, I'm a husband and a dad. A lot of people don't know that, uh, but that that's a huge part of my life. Um, and I'll tell you what, between those three things, I don't do very much else. <laughs> Maybe watch a movie every once in a while, but that's about it. Uh, what, what's your favorite album right now? My favorite album right now? Oh, man. Uh, my all-time favorite album, which I was talking off air with some of the guys, is House of Heroes, The End Is Not The End. Which is, by the way, I feel like, you know, you interview a lot of bands and you tell them you really like their album, and I always feel like they kind of don't believe you because everybody says that. No, still one of my favorites. And I always say, when you're interviewing a band, if you don't like their music, just don't tell them you like it. <laughs> just do the interview. You don't have to tell them. <laughs> but if you really like it, you can tell them. So if you would, tell us some of the ways that you guys are kind of uh, shining and sharing Christ in this season. Um, I think for us, probably one of the biggest things is that, we're, especially like as COVID hit in March, you always know, like I get up with people and your relationship with people on the radio or on a podcast, it's a weird relationship because they go with you all over the place. You know, like for me, I'm sitting in a room, but for you, you kind of take me wherever it is that you go. And uh, it just became so real to me how important it was that in the middle of some very tumultuous things that were going on, a lot of unsurety uh, or unsureness, people not knowing what was gonna happen, that they needed something that was something they could go to every day that they could count on. Like, hey, I'm gonna turn on the radio, Radio U's gonna be there. Uh, Obadiah and Nikki are gonna be there. Hudson's gonna be there. Um, and that has been something that to me, I felt like God really brought home of like, hey, you need to make sure you get in there and remind people, uh, it's funny how there's so much, everything has a very particular tone, you know, and to give people another tone that, hey, you're not alone. Even if you feel locked up alone, you're not alone. Jesus is there with you. We're there with you. And things are going to be okay. Like things are weird, but they're going to be okay. What would you say to these teenagers that right now feel like the world is closing in on them? How, how would you tell them to respond? Spiritually, there's nothing wrong with you if you're depressed. Uh, a lot of people think like, oh, I know God, therefore I'm not gonna be depressed. And that's just not true. Like it, it isn't true. And um, one of the things that I have found is that depression a lot of times is, it's your own mind fighting itself and your, your mind lies to you a lot. And it's funny how it actually, depression can become very isolating. You wanna be alone. Uh, and when you're alone, it's so much easier to believe the lies you're telling yourself because there's nothing there to push back on it. That's right. And so that's why as hard as it is being depressed, you got to come at it and say, even though there's something wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with something being wrong and I need some help. And you got to reach outside yourself for that help because in that moment, you're not getting what you need from yourself. Uh, and that's why we've got to turn to a relationship with Jesus. We've got to turn to people in our lives that we can trust to tell us the truth 
in a space where we're not really believing the truth. Um, and it's funny because when you're depressed, the lie seems so much more real than the truth does. The lie feels real, the truth feels like a lie. And so you really have to reach out and allow people to speak some good things into you about yourself. Um, and there are things that when you're depressed that can bring a temporary relief. Uh, for some people it's drugs and alcohol, it's porn, it's a bad relationship, it's cutting. Like, I mean, a lot of people cope a lot of different ways, uh, but the truth is the coping is almost as bad as what you're struggling with. Um, and it causes its own trouble and its own problems. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with coping. You just need to learn to cope the right way. I mean, all these other things are teaching you to cope. Now it's time to learn to cope in a way that's good. Healthy. And yeah, exactly. And that's why I would say... Uh, Restorative. Whether, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it, it takes a little effort to reach out, but you got to do it. Uh, you're actually reaching out to these other things. It's time to reach out to something that's actually going to help you. Let's, if, if you would, just as someone that ministers to everybody in Central Ohio, and you've, you're really aware of, especially the young people and the people that are calling Radio U, and I know they're not all young. I know that there's people my age that call yes, That's the beauty is I have no idea. I just have to address you as a person. I don't know how old you are. That's right. Yeah. Would you pray for Central Ohio in this I season would, and ask God to move in this? Yeah. Father, thank you so much for a chance to be here. And God, uh, I know that you're right where everybody is. You're here with us. You're here with people that are watching. God, I pray that they would come to know you as a friend the way that I have. You've been the best friend to me, God. Always there, always present. And I pray that they would be so aware of your presence, that Jesus, you would speak, you know, direction and wisdom and comfort to everybody. Help them to know what to do, how to do it. Jesus, show all of us how to live, live in good times, live in tough times and to really do things your way, God. Uh, show us what it is uh, that is life your way. And Jesus, so many people have needs. I pray every need would be met, that there's not a single person watching that reaches out to you that is like, well, God didn't do that. No, God, I pray that every single thing they need that you would take care of. And I ask this in your name, Jesus, amen. Oh, we thank you for sharing the gospel boldly. Absolutely, man, that's what, that's what I'm here for. You know, it's been so good to be with you again this week. I hope you're enjoying this and we love to hear your text and your emails to connect at tcnd.org. We love to hear how God is blessing you and helping you. Any answers to prayer that we've agreed with you, we would love to hear from you. But you know, you can always join us online every weekend. You can watch at the church next door, our live services online. But we also really would love for you to come out this weekend and join us for an outdoor service. You can sit in your car or you can bring your own chair and sit under a shade tree. Jennifer and I'll be there with you this weekend. And we've got an exciting announcement at the same time. Start listening on the radio to Your Next Step, our new radio program. It's going to be on the word 880 AM or 104.5 FM. Remember, text t-shirt right now. It's been good to be with you. I'm Pastor Doyle from the church next door, and I love you. I'll meet you back here next Sunday on NBC4.